All right, welcome everyone. We are going to get started with today's webinar. My name is Bobby Powers. I'm the head of learning and development for Gravity Payments. And we are thrilled to host this webinar today, Adapting Your Bridal Shop During COVID-19. So a couple quick logistical things to get out of the way in the start. You'll notice that at the bottom of your screen in the webinar panel on Zoom, there is a little button that says Q&A. If at any point during Janice's talk, you wanna ask a question, go ahead and click that button and submit your questions. We'll have a period of time at the end that Janice will go through as many of the questions that, as she is able to do live on this webinar. And what we've noticed in past webinars as we've hosted is that the ones that get in earliest generally are the ones that we have time to cover. So I encourage you to not wait until the end. If you have a question in your mind, go ahead and put that in as we go. It's my privilege to introduce our speaker today, Janice Yoder. Janice is the owner of Adore Bridal and Specialty. Janice started in the bridal industry almost 14 years ago and has owned her own shop for almost nine years. In her first year, her business exploded and she was flying high until she realized that although she knew how to sell, she had no idea how to make a profit and run a sustainable business. Something that many business owners I know have learned throughout the years. Finding herself on the brink of bankruptcy, she went back to basics and she regrew her business in a profitable and sustainable way. Janice thrives on change and is constantly looking for new trends and ways to adjust her business to stay on top of her game. With the recent COVID-19 pandemic, she decided to take this as an opportunity rather than a shutdown. And she built out a brand new business model to thrive during this time. She has an amazing team who constantly make her crazy ideas become reality. And in her spare time, she's a mom to an incredible man who supports her insanity 110% and is also the mom to four fabulous children. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Janice Yoder. Thanks for joining us, Janice. Hey, thank you so much for inviting me on this, Bobby. Now I'm gonna just clarify that I'm the wife to an incredible man, I'm not the mom to an incredible man. So just wanna clarify that there for a hot minute. Um, but I am so thankful to be here with you guys today. Um, I am excited to be able to share this this time with you, um, to be able to just maybe give you a little bit of what we've been doing, um, how we've been working in our business, and maybe it'll it'll inspire something for you. Now, I want to be clear on a couple of things as I share about what um, we have done with Adora Bridal. I want to be clear that what I'm doing is not necessarily something that I would encourage you to go exactly do as I am doing. Um, it's not going to be right for everybody. It may also not be possible depending on your situation. Now, here's another thing. These are like my precursors, right? There may be some of you that are watching that have already begun reopening. Um, I'm in the state of Illinois. Our mandated shutdown is through May 30th. Um, so I am not <laughs> really anywhere near, I mean, a month isn't that far away, but it sure feels like a really long time. Um, I've been shut down since March 21st was our official day. We chose to shut down. I think it was March 17th. Um, but March 21st was our last day in the store taking any brides. Um, so that's a long time. And with that, that's a long time. I realized very quickly that I could not sit and wait for this to end, that that was not going to work, not only not for me and my business, but that wasn't going to work for our brides. Um, now, before I go into everything, there's another reality here. There will be people, and there have been, because I've been sharing what we're doing with many people, and there are people that think I am completely nuts. They think I'm insane. They think what I'm doing is not a good idea, that it's a bad idea, that I'm putting my inventory at too much risk, that, I mean, there are so many things. There are some people that want to argue that, you know, I could be spreading the virus because I'm doing what I'm doing. And the reality with all of this is nobody knows really what's right or wrong. Nobody knows what's good or bad right now. L let's be honest. We're all making decisions between like, what's the least bad decision I could make right now? Now I'm not encouraging you to go out and make bad decisions that are putting people in danger, but I'm encouraging you in saying that there's not a right answer here. Um, so I want you to take the time to figure out 
what you can do for your business. Because the most important thing that you can do is something. I need you to do something right now. If you have been finding yourself in this time sitting at home, I need that to stop. I do. I need you to be doing something to move your business forward. Okay. Here is my next thing. This is the first step as you decide what your something is. So, okay, I'm, I've gotten to the point I was doing nothing and I doubt any of you are doing nothing, but let's just say I've gotten to the point I'm doing nothing. Now I'm going to do something. Okay. So now before I even decide what that something is, you need to take a risk tolerance assessment of yourself. Where are you at right now with your business and what is your risk tolerance that you can handle? Okay, I'm sending dresses out. I am boxing dresses up and shipping them out, praise the Lord, on Friday, that's tomorrow, holy cow. I can start offering curbside pickup, which is not even something I've been able to offer. Um, I can start offering that as well, but my dresses are going to people's homes and they are trying them on sometimes on a video call with me, sometimes without, and I don't know what their homes look like. I don't know what's happening. That's risky. That's very risky. And your risk tolerance level may not be as high as mine. But whenever all of this started to happen, you heard in my bio that I thrive on change. Like I actually love change to the point of it probably drives my staff crazy. There are times they come in here and I'll hear them walk in the back door and set their stuff down and start walking up front and go, Oh, Janice is having one of those days, isn't she? Because like the place is rearranged and you know, whatever the case may be. So I do thrive on change. That also means that my risk tolerance level is pretty high. I am very willing to try something and say, let's see, let's see what happens. Let's see if this works and let's move forward with it. So you have to decide for yourself, where is your risk tolerance level at? with all of this that's going on. For me, I felt like I had a point where I said, I do this or I lose my business. Now, that's a little extreme because I wasn't too like that close to the brink of bankruptcy like I've been in the past. I was nowhere near that. But still, for me, that's how it felt. It felt that if I chose to sit, and do nothing or do very little that I was putting myself straight back into that place that I was. And that was a really dark place. And I never, ever want to go there again. So my risk tolerance level was real high because I saw the other side of it as being, I am going to head back to this deep, dark place that I was at eight years ago and I never want to go there again. Okay. So if you're ready to come with me, <laughs> if you're, if you're saying, Hey, yeah, I, I'm feeling you, I'm going for that, then come on with me with, let me tell you what we've been doing. Now, if you're like somewhere where you're like, ah, like Janice, you're up here and I'm like, and I, think, I don't think I can go past here, that's okay. I still encourage you, please listen, please engage with us, please go into the Q&A time because there's gonna be something. There's gonna be something that you go, oh, but I could do that. Or, oh, that gives me an idea. I could tweak it and it could look a little something like this. So what are we doing? I already told you, so we've got boxes. I said, we've got boxes that are going to people's homes. Um, we've, they are called the Adore Bride Box. I own Adore Bridal is the name of our store. So we have the Adore Bride Box. Um, how we are doing this though, is the thing that I really think sets us apart and really has why we are having such a high success rate with these. Um, we are to the point where we have sent out over 20 boxes, which in some ways like doesn't feel like a ton, but whenever your store is shut down completely, you're like, oh no, that's a lot. Otherwise it would be zero. So we have sent out 20 boxes. Um, all but three of those have purchased their dresses. So uh, that's a pretty high closing ratio. And of those three that did not purchase their dresses, all three of them have paid for a second box. Those are actually two of the ones we're packaging up right before we were getting on today, um, trying to beat the UPS man before he comes in at 3.30. Um, so all three of those have said, hey, I love what you guys are doing. I trust your process enough. I trust you guys enough that I think if I did one more box, I would find my dress in that box. So 
that's amazing. So this is our biggest thing that we're doing, right? Are the Adore Bride boxes. Because let's all be honest, you all know it. You know that bridal gowns is where we make our money. Like that is where I make the majority of the money in my store. So whenever I didn't have that, that's devastating. So I can send out these bride boxes. Our process is that we have them fill out um, a Google form. It's actually going to be changing to a messenger bot, which I'm really excited about because we just hired on a lady to do that. Um, but anyway, they fill out a form. Um, the form asks them all kinds of questions about style and there's pictures in there. What are you drawn to? What's your budget? Um, we give them, we ask them what they typically wear in clothes size, you know, they just go out and buy a pair of jeans or buy a dress. We also have a video on how to measure. So we ask if they could, that's super helpful for us. If they actually give us their measurements ahead of time. Um, we ask who it's important that they have with them, whose opinion matters to them. Um, we ask all kinds of things in our interview. At the end of it, they choose how they want to get their box, whether they want to do a self-service. Um, there's some delivery pickup options for payment, more if we ship it, that kind of stuff. And then we also give them the option of doing a virtual appointment with us. We are not requiring virtual appointments because we understand some people are just simply uncomfortable. All of this is weird enough for them as it is. So some people are just simply not comfortable with that and that's okay because then our next step, I'm still not sending dresses outside unseen and I'm also not having them choose dresses. We choose them for them. So our next step is that they hop on the phone with us. This is typically done with my manager, Andrea, because she's freaking awesome at what she does. Um, so she hops on the call, on a call with them, talks kind of through their interview, gets a little bit better feel of what it is that they're hoping for in a wedding dress, all that good stuff. Maybe they shared their Pinterest board with us or sent us some pictures. And she just really builds that relationship with them, really encourages them in the fact that like, I know this is weird, but you are going to find your dress and that's going to feel so good like it is really hard right now and this is going to be such a joyous thing and you are going to have it checked off your list and that's going to feel so good um, so she really does a great job of encouraging them so through that process then after that we send them options we send them hey these are the dresses we're thinking of for you um, they have the ability to veto anything if they're like yeah no I don't I, that's not I, that's not really my jam um, they have the ability to veto those we'll send some replacements and then we get their boxes ready to go and we do what we can to really create a boutique experience still like as silly as it may sound it's just a really huge box that goes out but we have drawn the a of our logo on the box we have a bag that goes in there with you know different things that they're going to use um we put two veils in with each with each box, there's a long veil and a short veil that goes in there so that way they can experience that as well. Um, so we do things that really try to still create a boutique experience. We also, for those that decide to do, to up level it and do it with a virtual appointment, we have a couple extra like fun things that we add in um, for those that are doing the virtual appointment as well. So that's our bride boxes. It gets shipped out, they have it for two days, it gets shipped back to us. And like I said, I mean, 20 boxes have gone out so far and 17 have said yes, like, uh-huh, I'll take that. I will take those odds. So that is um, our Adore Bride boxes. The thing though that I wanna make sure that all of you guys know is if that is something that to you, cause I mean, that is a brand new business model and we, I have an amazing marketing girl and she created the graphics for it and we worked with our web company and they got pages up for us and I worked with my Charge It Pro reps and they were amazing and got us a hosted um, payment page for these. Like, I mean, all of these people came together in a way that I could never have done on my own to make this look like a legitimate thing. Like we are just like randomly sending, like this looks legit. It looks like I've had it around for a while. A lot of people have been surprised. They're like, oh, that's just like a thing that you offered and now it's a big deal. And I'm like, no, it was never a thing that I offered. We just made it up. Um, so 
just go for it though. There were times that we put stuff out there and we didn't have all the details figured out yet. We didn't have everything perfect yet. We started the process. We put something out there and then, and then as things started coming in, we were like, okay, now like pressure's on. We got to figure out this piece of it. Okay. Oh yeah. Now it's time to figure out this piece of it. And that's okay too, because part of it was an accountability for us. If I just waited until every single piece of it was perfect, I would still be sitting here trying to make it perfect every time it gets tweaked a little bit more and a little bit more. Um, now, I also want to encourage any of you, if you are not currently texting your customers, please start please start texting your customers. Um, we have gotten an enormous amount of Google reviews, of the not reviews during this time. Some of them have because we've specifically asked a few of them, but a lot of them is just because we're staying in contact with our brides. Because we're saying like, hey, I know that this is stressful for you. Hey, we found, we went through and we contacted a, um, a bunch of seamstresses in our area to see during the shutdown, who, let's be honest, who's breaking the rules. These are the seamstresses that are breaking. These are the ones that are still seeing customers right now. These are the ones that aren't. These um, are still seeing people, but they're already booked out. Like they'll, they will take July and on brides. These don't contact her. She's decided she's in a compromised situation. She's not taking. So we're doing all of that for our customers and it is creating huge customer loyalty, huge, just they're going out and reviewing us and doing this stuff because they're so thankful. Um, so take this time to do that. Take this time to go to just stay in contact. Hey, you know, I, I know two weeks ago, I told you no delays. I'm just letting you know again today, no delays. Um, and I've got over, well, we were just looking it up. We've got 190 outstanding orders. And so it's no small feat to go through 190 orders and individually reach out to them and say, hey, you know, we're, we're still on track. I know I told you last week we're still on track and I'm telling you again this week that we're still on track, but it's just that touch point that makes them feel confident and that you're going above and beyond. The other thing that I highly recommend is pull your bridal database who needs to do the next thing and figure out a way to do it with them okay do what of your brides do you not know if they've done bridesmaids yet or maybe you know that they haven't done bridesmaids yet do them now figure out a way to do them during the shutdown who hasn't done tuxes yet do it now who still needs accessories do it now now this you have to figure out for you like we, we were doing virtual tucks and accessories and bride, bridesmaid appointments within a day after the shutdown. Don't overthink it. Get on a Zoom call, throw some dresses on mannequins and go. Like, don't overthink these things. It does not have to be perfect. Nobody is expecting perfection during this time. They're just thankful that you can help them and that you want to help them. You don't have to have a perfect presentation. Heck, I, I showed up for a bridesmaid, virtual bridesmaid appointment one day because honestly it got put on a different calendar. And so we kind of missed it. And I was in leggings and a sweatshirt and they were like, yeah, are you kidding me? It was one of our first ones. I, and they were, they loved it. I like, I'm so sorry. And they're like, like, you don't even know if we've got pants on over here. It's fine. So people don't expect perfection during this time. And in fact, the more real you are with them, the more they relate to you, the more thankful they are for you. And that's a great thing that builds a lot of customer loyalty as well. Be authentic. Tell them where you're at. Tell them like, oh, it was like the hot mess express today. I'm so sorry. Like they're all, we're all experiencing it. Um, so build those relationships, but find ways to help your customers. Um, find ways to do that. We can do a lot virtually. We can do a lot more virtually than I think any of us ever realized we could do. We just have to do it. And a lot of times we don't do it because we have a fear. We have a fear that because I can't give off a certain persona or I can't do it in a certain way that I shouldn't do it at all. Um, and I'm just going to encourage you that that's not the case. Now, I, I'm probably a little bit lucky because we have branded our store in a way where 
people are pretty used to like quirky personalities or a little goofy. Um, we're going to have just a lot of fun with you. And so that has been able to translate very easily. Um, so that way our branding is still very on point with what we're doing. Um, so that's something that you should be thinking about. Like if that doesn't fit your branding at all, might not be the best thing for you. But at the same time, we are in unprecedented times. It's okay to give yourself some grace in that area as well. Um, if you are not able to do something so brand perfectly, that is okay. So don't worry, it's okay. Give yourself grace, just move forward. Just do something, take a step. And that'll be a good thing. Now, I want to encourage you, like I said, to be texting your brides. I need you to be texting your brides. Um, I also, I want to encourage you to find a way to keep taking payments that maybe doesn't involve on the phone. And maybe this is something like if you are a Charge It Pro customer, I know that there are some things, um, I don't know enough about them yet. I know that there are some people on here that can probably answer that question better, that I believe there are some ways that they are working on or maybe already have developed that can be like text for payment. And I'm telling you, that has been life changing for us. We have been able to get so many sales in, like so many sales in because we have been able to take text payments. It's so easy for our customers than trying to figure out the phone thing and get people at the right time. So figure out a way to do text payments. That's a huge, that I please, like a huge recommendation that I have for you. It keeps those accessory sales coming in. It keeps um, bridesmaid sales coming in depending on how you do tuxedos. Um, but text payments, are, you're really gonna see a huge increase in the way that, in the, just the monies that you're bringing in right now. Be on social media, run sales on accessories, do fun things. I've seen so many stores put together some of the cutest things. They're selling these like bride bags where you know things are hard for your bride right now. So we've put together this special bag that um, can be a gift for a bride. Um, I've seen those, I've seen, we've done a couple of times on our social media where it's more like gifty jewelry or like it would be a necklace or a bracelet or something that's geared more towards a bridesmaid, you know, a 30 some dollar bracelet. Um, so posting those and kind of doing like text us to purchase and then we can do the entire thing through text where, yep, great, what color, click the link to pay and there you go. Um, so you just kind of think outside the box a little bit. Um, that's what all of this is about is thinking outside the box, right? Or with the Adore Bride boxes, we thought inside the box a little bit, but you know, that's okay. Um, the point is, is that all of these things are about what can you handle right now. There may be some of you that have still not seen any funding. There may be some of you that have gotten the PPP loan. There may be some that have um, gotten the full EIDL disaster loan. So there are people at completely opposite ends of the spectrum, completely opposite ends of the spectrum of where you're at financially, even just because of what has or hasn't come in. And I get that. And that makes all of this so much harder. It makes it so much harder that there are some of you that are reopening right now and others of us that have over a month left before we're allowed to reopen. Um, so keep moving forward and doing things. But there's one more thing that I've got to touch on before I promise I will stop and answer all the questions that you guys have um, and ask me questions over things that I haven't talked about. I, I love answering questions. Um, but one more thing here, because if you are in a place that's reopening, and even in the state of Illinois, yesterday I had probably my biggest meltdown that I've had through this whole thing. Like it finally happened yesterday, over a month into this. And yesterday was probably my biggest meltdown day. Um, and the reasoning for it for me 
my struggle yesterday was in the state of Illinois, there's a lot of fighting that's happening right now. There's a lot of, we shouldn't have the entire state, shouldn't all have the same thing. So downstate Illinois, which is, you know, me, well, I'm mid-state, but everything outside of Chicago is considered downstate. If you're below I-80, you're considered downstate. So um, downstate Illinois should have different restrictions than above I-80, the Chicago land area. Um, and so there are attorney general saying, I won't prosecute anybody that wants to not follow the restrictions. Um, there are different like tri-county areas that are saying we want to reopen May 1st. Here's our phase thing that we think we want to do. There's just so much out there that is all it's fighting is what it is and it's so difficult to navigate and if you are in an area that is reopening that's awesome and you could be watching this and say well I don't need to do any of this because I get to reopen. Well here is a here's a reality check for you. You may be reopened now. We all experienced something that none of us have ever experienced before. We all experienced being told, you have to shut your doors like tomorrow and we don't know when you're gonna be able to reopen them. We don't know if that's gonna happen again. There's a reality. The reality is, is that you need to be doing things in your business that gets you ready for anything. And I know you can't actually be ready for anything. I get that. I get that I'm saying to you something that's actually very impossible, but I want you to be thinking that way. Like this could happen again. If, if you're in an area that is reopening already, if your numbers increase, you're going to get shut down again. There's all this talk of maybe it's going to be really bad in the winter again. Um, if you are in an area that's reopening, really look at what your restrictions are. I've seen a lot of you, I've seen you say like, well, we're going to have a family member dress them. Um, we are going to limit the amount of guests that they can bring with them. That is all well and good. And I appreciate that. And I want you to think through all of those things. I also don't want you to spend too much time on figuring out how you're going to clean. I know obviously you need to figure out how you're going to clean, but there's so many unknowns to the reopening process. Are there things that you can be doing that you don't have to answer all of those questions and still be getting sales? Um, how many people are you going to be allowed to take? How are you going to handle if you say, well, it's only bride and one guest and the next door over is saying it's unlimited guests. Now, I'm not telling you that then you should say unlimited guests, but I'm telling you that you need to think about those things. And I'm telling you, I'm actually telling you, I would highly encourage you to reach out to your county health department and get very specific recommendations from them. We're all sitting around here trying to come up with our own, well, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. You all have a health department and that health department is there to help you and to help everybody stay safe. And if you contact your local health department, they're going to be able to really give you some strong recommendations of what you can be doing to reopen safely. Um, our industry is very weird and we of course are lumped into retail, right? So it's like, oh, retail can reopen so you can reopen. And we all know that we're very different than retail. Um, like if you're gonna make a decision to have you have to think through these things, right? So I'm gonna make a decision, let's say, that um I I, someone else has to help you in a dress. Well, then you have to stay consistent with that decision. That means that someone else also needs to be clipping her and you need to give her that guidance on how to clip. That means someone else needs to put the veil in her hair because if you're saying, I'm not gonna help you in the dress, then you're saying, I'm gonna, I'm gonna socially distance myself from you, which is fine. I'm not telling you that you shouldn't do that. We're trying to figure out if that's what we would do here. I'm just saying you have to stay consistent all the way through it. So I'm not going to be the one to help you in the dress. So like, who's going to be your person? And you would obviously want to prep them ahead of the time that this is how it's going to be. And you have to see it all the way through. Okay. So this is like your special helper. So here are your clips. Here's like a crash course on being a bridal consultant. I'm going to, oh, no, we'll clip it a little bit more, a little bit lower, that kind of thing. Okay. Like, let's put this veil. You're going to put this veil in her hair. You have to stay consistent all the way through it. Um, you can't say that well, I'm going to do these things and then you do them halfway. Uh, I want you guys to go all in on this. There's a lot of things out there, right? 
in Illinois, that's our big thing, all in Illinois. Um, and, and that's how it's gonna have to be whenever you reopen too. Once you figure out your guidelines, you're gonna have to be all in on them. You can't do them half the time. You can't do them for half the customers. Um, you gotta be all in on that. I highly recommend that you talk with your local health department on helping you figure out what those guidelines are in the case of beginning to reopen. And you need to realize that whenever you reopen, it's not gonna be at full capacity. There are still gonna be brides out there that are uncomfortable going shopping. And so you need to still be figuring out ways. This isn't over yet, unfortunately, I'm sorry. I know that I tend to be a pessimist. I was asking my husband the other night, who's an extreme optimist, we're like opposites, it's very good in our marriage. It keeps us balanced. And I asked him last night, I said, I'm afraid that I'm making a few of my decisions maybe I'm being too extreme in my like pessimistic worst case scenario thinking and he goes you're not you're not at all and I was like whoa my extremely optimistic husband just said that to me I'm like okay okay you be prepared for something that you can't really be prepared for um, but do things that are continuing to move you forward in your business that's my biggest encouragement for you is that you keep stepping one day at a time Find your purpose, find your thing that you're going after. For some people, it's just massive social media right now. It is social media, it's education for brides, it's vendor relationships because they don't, I know some people that their their websites were not, like they, there's nothing. There was nothing that, like whenever they were shut down, they were, they couldn't even go, I'm thankful this entire time I've been able to come into my store. There are some places that wasn't possible for, so, you still have to, so then they're on social media all the time and they're posting and they're getting engagement and they're building relationships with vendors and they're getting vendors to share things. That's the other thing. I got to be really honest with you. This is, this is my final thing too, right? Whenever I started the Adore Bride Boxes, I didn't really expect them to do much, to be perfectly honest, but I expected that it would get picked up, that it would be something that people would talk about. And it has been. I'm in rural Illinois. I'm in, I'm in downstate Illinois. I'm in central Illinois. Um, and our local news station picked it up. The Chicago Tribune um, picked it up. Like it is something we've had so many vendors sharing it. Um, we've had vendors invite us in their lives and that kind of stuff. So that is a big deal. It's a big deal because it's getting our name out there as well. Now, thankfully, the Bride Boxes have actually also done very, very well, but even if they hadn't, it was something that I was originally doing just for advertising, just for something to talk about, just to say, hey, look, they're doing something. Um, so I'm going to say it again, do something. That's my ultimate encouragement for you. Do something because I've seen a lot of bridal stores sitting and not even hardly posting on social media like once every five days or whatever do something during this time I'm wearing my new favorite shirt today because I say this a lot this is my it's fine I'm fine everything's fine it's fine I say that a lot it's fine it's fine it's not fine guys it's not fine at all it's not fine we are all struggling this hurts so bad. Like, I mean, even as we're doing virtual appointments, I tell my brides, I said, I'm going to be like, you're going to watch me sometimes. I'm like, I want to come through the screen and grab that dress and clip it and like pull it up at the shoulders. Like, this is so hard. It's so hard whenever, I mean, every single time a bride says yes, and we're on a virtual appointment with her, I'm still sad. I'm happy and sad all at the same time. I feel like I'm in the movie um, Inside Out, I think is the name of it. Anyway, the Disney movie. And like, I'm experiencing all of these like warring emotions at the exact same time. It is so hard. It is so hard. But I can choose how I, and yesterday, like I said, it was a really hard day and I cried a lot. I did. And then by the evening I went, I'm okay. Because there was a couple things that happened and I can, that were really good and I can focus on those. And there was a couple things that happened that at first I was like, no, that's not good. But then all of a sudden I had a perspective shift on it and I went, no, 
I can see the good in that though. There's a, there is actually good. That thing that I just thought was really, really bad or was annoying or whatever. Now I can see the good in that. So look for those things. Look for the good. Look for the challenge. Lean into it. All of these things that, you know, lean in, all in, all of these things that all the motivational books and speakers tell us, but now is really the time. Now is the time in your business that you can actually have a huge impact on your community, for your brides, for yourself, and you really can thrive through this time. Thank you guys so much for being on today. I can't wait to answer your questions. Pick my brain, ask me all the things that you want. Um, thank you for doing this in the middle of your Thursday, whatever that normally looks like for you and taking this time for your business. That's, that's one step. You did something. That's a good thing. Step number one. Step number one. Janice, thank you so much for sharing all that with us. I know we've gotten quite a few questions, so I want to jump into those really quick. We got a question from Alicia who asked, do you have a pre-signed contract that covers any damages to the dress or veil when they have the dress at home? I do. I have an intense contract. Like it is pages long. Um, I have a very intense contract. So that's why um, Charge It Pro Gravity Payments was so amazing that they, that's why it was really, really important for me that my payment system for this was with them because it also captured the card and kept it on file as well. So I have the ability to log into the back end of my, um, of the website of at Gravity Payments and um, to be able to then go in and charge their card if needed. So I have a very extensive contract with all kinds of disclaimers and warranties. Blah, 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 blah. Um, I have all of those things, but one of the most important things that is more what you're asking for, I have um, the, the damage portion of it. So there is definitely, you know, if this happens, then your card will automatically be charged this. If this happens, then it's this. And they range from, you know, if it's something that we can take to the dry cleaners and clean out, then it's this. If it's something that, you know, causes us to send it to restoration or alterations, an alteration specialist, then it's this. If you're late in returning the box, it's this. If you don't return a clip, like each one of our little things that are in the box have a dollar amount on them too. And if you forget to return a clip, it's this amount. Um, so yes, it's very, very covered. And then on our, that's, they sign that whenever they pay. And then whenever we actually send out their box, um, we have like four sheets of paper that go into a little see-through packet thing. Um, but we have a, one of them is a packing list. And on the back of the packing list, we also print that the portion of the contract that's just about those fees, just kind of as a reminder of like, hey, don't forget, you've got like 10 grand worth of stuff at your house. Take this seriously. Makes sense. Next question is from Marcella who asks, what do you charge for the Adore Bridal Box? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we just changed the pricing structure a little bit. Um, so we are now, it's 49. Now, again, risk tolerance. I'm going to just throw that out there, risk tolerance level. So we pretty much just only cover our shipping. shipping. So it is $49 for curbside pickup. Um, it is $99 for shipping within the state of Illinois, and it is $149 for shipping outside the state of Illinois. That essentially, like, it costs me shipping within the state of Illinois. Now, I'm lucky. I'm right in the middle of the state, so no matter where I ship in Illinois, it's a one-day ship, and it's $40 to $50 um, each way. So I'm basically covering my shipping on it is what I do. And then they also know that um, if they purchase a dress, what they paid for goes towards the purchase of their gown as well. Okay, great. Next question is from Nicole who asks, when you send the box, are you placing a hold on the card for a certain amount in case the gowns don't return or if they get returned damaged? Sure. So kind of answered that with why we specifically wanted to make sure that Charge It Pro Gravity Payments was the one that was um, where their card was. So it's not, a, there's no hold on the card. So I know that the card is valid because they paid for the box with the card. Now, obviously I could try to charge it for $1,500 and that charge might not go through, but I still have their card on file. And then the contract is covering me as well to know like what the next step would be if that was the case. Okay, great. And then another question was, based on your success so far, are you planning on continuing to offer this new service once your store reopens? And if so, have you projected how much this is going to help your business grow? 
That is a great question that we do not know the answer to yet. <laughs> that is a big, I don't know. And the reason why is I don't know. Um, part of it is, is we recognize whenever I made the comment that if we're allowed to win, I mean, we'll be allowed to reopen someday, but when we're allowed to reopen, what we don't know is if we will be allowed to open at full capacity or at a diminished capacity. If we're allowed to reopen at a diminished capacity, then yes, for sure, we're gonna keep the bride boxes going too, just so that way then maybe at diminished capacity in store, plus the bride boxes, we're at our normal capacity. If we're allowed to just reopen at normal, which is, which is what I'm anticipating, let's just be honest. Um, if we're allowed to reopen at full capacity, then we're talking a whole new, like we would have to figure out because it's inventory control then too, because you got dresses out of the store when we also have brides in the store. So lots of, we're, we're, te we're going through all of them. We're playing all the what if games right now, but still yet to be seen. And I guess that just reiterates what you mentioned earlier of try something, give mm -hmm. something a shot and then see what works and then pivot from there. Mm -hmm. Brooke is wondering, how are you advertising this service to clients? And have you been able to expand your geographic reach at all since brides don't need to come to the store? Yeah, absolutely, Brooke. Great question. Um, the main way for advertising is 100% social media, like social media, social media. Um, so that is absolutely the case. Now, not only organically, we actually, so Adore Bride Box has its own Instagram account now as well. Um, not that we expect it to, to do a ton, but it's just one more layer of honestly making it look like super legit whenever we're just making stuff up. Um, but we have our Google ads now talking about our Adore Bride Box. We have our Facebook ads and our Instagram ads talking about our Adore Bride Box. So it's all about the targeted marketing for sure. Um, then, like I said, the other thing is just the fact that we have been on our local news. I mean, if you do something like this, tell people that you're doing this because it's very, very shareable content. Um, so getting other people to share about it has been a huge deal too. Um, oh, the other question, geographic reach, absolutely. Um, we are shipping boxes so far. Actually, whenever I said it's 149 for outside the state of Illinois, that is brand new for us. Like literally as of yesterday, we just changed our stuff because when we first started, we said we were only shipping within the state of Illinois. We've gotten enough requests from people outside the state of Illinois um, and even inside the state of Illinois, we have, we've shipped to places that are 20 minutes away from me, we've shipped to places that are four hours away from me. So we have been all over the state with our boxes. Yeah, that's great. Rosemary, Rosemary is wondering, is there a minimum number of gowns that you send to brides? Good question, yeah. So we tell our brides, we set the expectation that they're gonna get three to five gowns. Um, the vast majority of the boxes, we've done five mostly because they fit in the box. The ones that have not gotten five has been, they've, I don't think we've had anybody get three. The minimum we've done so far is four. And that's usually because it's a bride that wants ball gowns and four, we're like, we are only gonna be able to get four dresses in that box. So three to five is what is, what we is the expectation that we get to give to brides and then they get really excited whenever they get a box with five in it because they were like well i knew i, I might have only gotten three so they just think that they're extra special <laughs> that's good and a follow-up question on that front do you send dresses with disclosure tags in case brides just want to try on for pictures well i mean i kind of I guess I would ask a question back to that of like, what kind of disclosure are you asking of them? We don't, the only thing we put on the bags is how to take care of the dress. Um, I mean, there is no way, unfortunately, for this is a risk tolerance thing. I'm sure that there will, as we continue the service and as we expand the service, our closing ratio will probably go down because there will be brides that get this box just because they want to play dress up and sit in a wedding dress on their couch. Now, granted, do they really want to spend $99 to do that? I think that's ridiculous, but someone may think that's a great idea. Um, and that's just part of the risk that I'm taking on it. Kent is wondering, what do these boxes look like and what is their size? What do the boxes look like? Well, let me just take you Oh, we're going to get a live tour? 
<laughs> let's just head on back. There are boxes just like, oh yeah, I've got one laying in here that I threw that I like literally brought in the door today. So she's a pretty big box. Um, so this is what the boxes look like. They are just, we got them from Uline. Nothing special about that. There she is with her little A on her, two A's. Um, we have found the, for us, the perfect size. Oh, there they are. Um, here's our ones just hanging out up here. So 30 by 20 by 18, if you want to be real specific, is the size for anyone that's looking. That's the size that's worked really well for us to be able to get those three to five gowns out. Okay, great. Thanks, Janice. Next question. You mentioned being on the local news. How did you make that happen? Did you pitch the story or did someone find out about it? Yeah, for the local, I pitched it 100%. Like the day that we went live on the website, um, I wrote into two different of our local news stations and just said, hey, this is what we're doing right now. Um, we just want to show people that even though things are shut down, like you could take this from a couple ways from a bride perspective. Um, we want you to move forward in your wedding planning because there will come a point upon reopening where I might have to say, I'm sorry, your only options are what we have in the store off the rack. But if we do it this way, your options are still endless. Um, and then the other angle is just to encourage other businesses to, you know, change their thinking and change their structures and be able to. So I pitched that. They picked it. I mean, I had it. I'd sent it one night at like 1030 PM and I had a phone call first thing the next morning and they wanted to come out that day. Um, Chicago Tribune just picked it up. They just found it. I think I heard it ran somewhere else too. And that would have been, they just picked it up from our local news station because of course all, that's AP, so all of that stuff just sits in files in places and anyone can pick it up. Yeah, and I, I know a lot of media outlets are looking for positive stories amidst this time that we're surrounded by so much negativity. And so this is a, a good glimpse of a good positive story, local story. It's an easy sell to your local news station. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Follow-up question from something before about the, the dress boxes. Do you charge per dress as well? We do not. Nope. There's an, again, risk tolerance. I know other places, even places around me that are doing it as well, that I've talked with them through the process on how they do it. Um, and they are putting basically a deposit per dress. If you, it's a hundred dollars per dress. So, you know, there's a $300 and maybe that's a full on charge, or maybe it's like a hold on their card kind of thing. The authorization, like we were talking about, um, and they do it per dress. We just don't, my risk tolerance level is high enough that I don't want that to deter anybody. So we just charge the $49.99 for $149. And then if they want a virtual appointment with it, it's an add-on fee for that. Okay, great. And there are a couple of comments here from Nicole. So I want to mention those because I think it'll spur some more discussion. Um, one of them is Janice, you are very encouraging your bridal peers. So thanks for that encouragement. And thanks for your transparency. Um, Nicole mentioned that uh, they had placed an order for bridal stocking or for body stockings for brides to wear during try-ons. I'm not sure how much that will prevent, um, but feel that every ounce of prevention we can offer is good. So maybe could you speak a little bit more about what's in your mind around prevention and how to deal with COVID spreading? Totally, that's a great question. I mean, that's a great thing to talk about. Um, you know, every little bit does help. So I would say that those body stockings, some people, I, I would even say it's almost an optional thing. I mean, just in the sense that some people may get so excited that you're offering something like that and it's gonna just make them feel more comfortable. Um, for us, I mean, obviously a body stocking, if we know that like this is spread because, you know, I touched my face and then I touched the dress or I sneezed and therefore it got on the dress, a body stocking isn't going to prevent it from getting on your dresses. But if it makes them feel like it's protecting them from the condition the dresses might've come in, then that's how you would kind of go that angle. Like it would help them feel more protected. Um, at this point for us, we are not doing anything like that. Um, but that's also because we are letting all of our brides know that um, all anything that goes out gets cleaned whenever it comes back in. 
Um, so you're not getting anything that came straight from someone else's house. It's gone through whatever cleaning process or you know, decontamination, whatever you want to call it, um, process to make sure that we're just, we're doing what we can. Um, obviously there's still so many unknowns, but we are doing everything in our power to make sure that we're sending you something that doesn't have, for lack of a better word, any germs on it. Um, and that whenever it comes back in, we're going to keep ourselves safe in the same way as it goes through any of the cleaning process that we put it through. And that's a perfect segue. We actually had two people ask questions about the cleaning process. So what exactly is that process that you use? Yeah. And can you speak a little bit more about that? Yeah, it's, it's an interesting question because there's a lot of layers to it. Now, remember, we are talking about shipping dresses in and out. So that may feel super dangerous, but also the longer that an item goes without having any human contact to it that the virus dies on its own too. Um, so there also becomes a reality of if I can simply extend my time of turnaround with these dresses, it's the virus dies. Like it can only live so long on services, especially the what we found in studies is it is the smooth surfaces that it can live the longest on. Well, a wedding dress, from a study that I found, um, cardboard, they found it could live up to 24 hours on. So like you think about the transit time and you might just be fine whenever you're thinking about the virus. Now, um, we tend to wash most all of our dresses that come back in, but obviously the longer that we do this, I don't necessarily wanna wash a dress twice a week because it can break down the fabric, um, but washing, pre there's pretty much none of these fabrics that you can't wash. Um, we also have a steam cycle on our washing machine, so it doesn't necessarily have to be washed, but a steam cycle in my washing machine is gonna be more time effective for me and my staff than standing there and steaming the dress. And also just the reality of like, if I'm standing and steaming a dress, you can't get everything. I have not, I'm just gonna say it because someone's probably gonna ask if they haven't already. I have not invested in any of the spray cleaners. Um, I have nothing against them. I, I think that the cleaning process is gonna have to be very individualized to what you think is best for your store because I think we can find flaws in all of them. Um, because if you think about a spray cleaner, well, I mean, if I spray clean something in my house, the only way that the parts get clean that didn't actually get sprayed is because you wipe it. Well, you can't, you aren't wipping fabric. So a spray cleaner feels like the only way I can guarantee that absolutely every part of that garment got cleaned by the spray cleaner is if I douse the thing and like fully submerge it in the cleaner. So I think you have to figure out what you think is best, what makes you feel the safest and share that this is the process, this is what we're doing. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And then we have a couple questions left and then we'll wrap up. Um, part of this question, I believe, was answered already, but part of it we haven't gotten to. Regarding the at-home try-ons, how do you figure out what they prepay for the gowns to try it on at home? Is it a flat fee or is the pricing based off the price of the dresses, which I think we've talked about a little bit? And is it refundable or non-refundable if they do not purchase a dress? So um, it is applied towards their purchase. So either way, you could say it's non-refundable in the sense that I'm not giving them any money back. Um, and we apply it towards the purchase of their dress. If they don't purchase a dress, it does not get applied towards it. Specifically, so I mentioned, so we've had 20 boxes go out and three have not purchased. Um, those three have paid for new boxes to go out to them, but they also understand that what they paid for in the original box it's lost money. Like they didn't buy anything from that box. So they've paid for an additional box. If they buy something from this box, that money gets applied towards the purchase. So it's very individualized to their boxes um, of whether anything that they paid gets applied towards their purchase or not. Um, there is no graduating. It is not based off of budget or prices of gown. It's just a flat fee. Really the thing is, is that I'm even struggling with having like a three, I mean, 
curbside, this is the first time we've been able to offer curbside, and this is the first time we're offering outside of Illinois. It was just one fee. Um, the more options you give tend to confuse customers. It and if you confuse customers, it makes them just not do anything. So I, I recommend just really figuring out with your risk tolerance level, what are you comfortable with and make it as simple as possible for the customer to understand. Right. Another question from Rosemary, how do you make sure you send dresses that will fit a bride and they don't damage dresses by trying to fit in a dress that doesn't fit? Yeah, so that's why we pick dresses. That was actually one of the biggest things um, that, you know, a lot of people as this stuff was starting to come out or maybe people had the ideas of this things. It would be like, I'm going to let them shop my website and then send them, you know, the ones that they choose off my website. Well, I wasn't going to do that because I knew I'm going to send, I'm going like a size 24 is going to pick a dress that I only have in a size 10 and I'm not going to send a size 10 to a size 24. So that's why we control it. It is very, very controlled by us. Um, so they have to tell us either their measurements or their current pant size. Now, obviously people can lie about those things, right? Like, I mean, we had one girl the other day that said that she buys or she has between a zero and an eight in pants. And we're like, well, that's clearly not a thing. Like, yeah, you maybe have a pair of zeros that you've had for a really long time and you probably shouldn't be wearing anymore, but you're not between a zero and an eight in pants. Um, but we, on the phone call then, like if we're, if we're unsure, um, we'll try to get more out of them in the phone call. And then to be perfectly honest, we 100% Facebook stalk them. We absolutely Facebook stalk them. So that way we can get a feel of like, oh yeah, no, that's not the size that she, and then we adjust from there and we send them dresses that are going to fit them or at least be close to fitting them. You heard it, heard it here for, uh, <laughs> you heard it here that Facebook stocking actually has some benefits to it, which I was not aware of until this oh, call. So glad to hear that. Like business benefits, like you wouldn't believe Facebook stock your customers all the time. And then we'll wrap up with this final question. If you could whittle everything you've been talking about down to three key takeaways for the audience, what would it be? Well, I think I said, do something right? That's my favorite one. Do something. Start there. Make a commitment that I'm going to do something. Um, the other thing is, is that, man, three things. I like, if I say them really fast, can I say more than three? Um, I think I keep talking about risk tolerance. And I really think that that's probably one of the most important things in all of this as you're making decisions about what you're going to do. Because I get asked questions like some of these all the time. And my answer always has to be, well, what are you comfortable with? What is your risk tolerance level? Like I, like I said, the way that I do it, the pricing structure that I'm doing it, you may be super uncomfortable with that. And that is okay. That's okay. So what is your risk tolerance level that you feel like you can handle in order to do something? Because we got to do something. So if I'm going to do something, I've got to figure out what is my level that I can handle in risk for my inventory, for all of those things, for me making sure that I, I feel like I'm keeping my staff stay safe and my customers safe, that I'm not spreading the virus. I've got to figure out what my risk tolerance level is for that. And then once I've made a commitment to do something and I figured out what my risk tolerance level is, then the third step is you got to go. Like it's kind of do something again, but it, it comes down to create something, put it out there. It does not have to be perfect, but move forward. So I just said, do something risk tolerance and move forward. I mean, that like could be for anybody, obviously not just a bridal store. And I told you nothing specific, but that's because I can't, I can't tell you something specific because I don't know, everybody's restrictions are different right now of what they are and are not allowed to do. Um, everybody has a different level of how many staff do you have? How big is your store? All, those are different for everybody. So there is not a cookie cutter one size fits all for this. But the point is, is that I'm doing something that I've never done before in my business. We created a brand new business model. And yes, virtual appointments, that's great. But like the bride box, like everything that we're doing is brand new and unlike anything that we've done before. But we did it and we put it out there and 
we're just making stuff up, but we just really pretend like we sound like we know exactly what we're doing whenever we tell our brides. We speak it with so much confidence. They're like, oh, you guys have been doing this forever. I mean, the different news people that have talked to me, they like cannot believe that I've been doing, that we've been doing this for like three weeks. I mean, it, confidence, like say it with confidence. And they're like, yeah, it's totally normal that you're shipping me a box and I'm trying on wedding dresses at my house and I'm clamping with things that electrical clamps, that's what we use from Farm and Fleet. This is totally normal that you're doing that. It's fine. It's fine. I'm fine. Everything is fine. Um, and it's that, that's an okay thing to do. Like, right. They say fake it till you make it. That is what we are all living in right now. Big time. Yeah. It's definitely an era for that. Well, with that, Janice, thank you again so much for doing this. Everybody that's attended, thank you for joining this gravity payments webinar. You will receive a survey because we'd love to know what your experience was like and how we can improve for future webinars. And we also will follow up with an email that has a little bit more detail about this webinar. It'll include a video and it also will include a link to a little bit more information about Gravity Payments. I know Janice, you mentioned text to pay options have been really helpful during this time. And it's really a situation where everyone's fumbling for some new way to accept payments in this random digital age that we were thrust into with COVID. So if you need any help on that front, please let us know, gravitypayments.com. Janice, thank you again so much. Really, really thankful for you and your energy and all that you brought to this webinar. Can't thank you enough. Thanks so much for having me, Bobby. I'm so like, I was so thankful that um, you guys reached out to me last week and that it all worked and here we are. So I'm grateful for that. Here we are and do something. Do <laughs> we'll something. end with that. <laughs> Thanks, Janice. Have a, have a good day, everyone.